Now, April is early spring in Rocky Mountain National Park, even though it may not look a lot like your experience of spring. While most of the United States is enjoying the appearance of grass, leaves, and flowers, it's still quite wintry up here. Yet if you look closely, you'll notice the signs that winter is beginning to release its grip. April is a time of transition in the park. It can be characterized by big, heavy snowfalls. In fact, some of the biggest snows of the year arrive in April. After these snowfalls, it often looks like a winter wonderland as the snow tends to cling to every branch and rock due to the warmer temperatures. Now, during the daytime, temperatures in the park are usually above freezing, slowly melting the snow and its ice. As the month progresses, the ice on the lakes and streams begins to melt and the delightful sound of running water can be heard. Now, during the month of April, the lower elevations of the park are usually snow-free, apart from the occasional snowstorm while the snow around the Bear Lake area will often be well over five feet deep. April is one of the quietest times of the entire year. Finding accommodation up here is generally not difficult during the month of April, though some lodges, hotels, restaurants, and shops may be closed during this month as locals get out to take their yearly break before the start of the busy season. During the month of April, even weekends in the park are generally not too busy. You'll find that there is rarely much of a line at the entrance stations. The weather is often so warm and delightful down in the Denver area and along Colorado's Front Range that people prefer to stay down there and enjoy the spring-like weather rather than driving up to Rocky Mountain National Park where winter still reigns. Now, while April is often a snowy month in the mountains, the snow during this month, especially towards the end of this month, can often be rather wet. When conditions are like this, it will stick to your snowshoes and make it a lot more challenging uh, to hike with snowshoes. Fortunately, there are often cooler days that are perfect for snowshoeing and other activities. Now, when the snow is soft and wet, hiking without snowshoes is not recommended. Even the well-traveled trails can get quite soft during the later part of this month, causing you to break through the trail with every step. When conditions are like this, I recommend hiking down in the lower elevations of the park where the snow is completely melted. Some of the good hikes at this time of year that are usually snow-free are Gem Lake, the Black Canyon Trail, Chasm Falls along Old Fall River Road, and also don't forget about uh, hiking on Wild Basin Road. It's a delightful hike in the spring. During the month of April, you can often find many migratory birds passing through this area. I really enjoy all the bird song that I hear at this time of year. Now, a great place to spot them is around Lake Estes, just outside of Estes Park. You can also find quite a few birds on the south-facing slopes, such as on the south side of Deer Mountain and also along Lumpy Ridge. You are also likely to see elk grazing in the meadows, but they're usually looking pretty shabby in April as they're in the process of losing their thick winter coats. The bull elk also lose their antlers at this time of year, and so it can be hard to tell which ones are the males and which ones are the females. Because the elk all look so disheveled, I find that I rarely photograph them during this month. Now, please keep in mind that if you do find antlers while out hiking, that it's illegal to collect them. Please leave them where you find them, as the smaller animals have evolved to rely on those antlers for precious nutrients. Also be aware that this time of year is the most difficult for all of the wild animals in the park, so give them extra space. They've struggled through the long winter and have expended most of their energy reserves waiting for the fresh vegetation to arrive. Now there are a few things you should be aware of. When it snows in the park, the National Park Service implements Colorado's vehicle traction law. When this is in effect, you are required to have the proper tires for the snow with sufficient tread, or you must have chains. Also, be aware that if you plan to spend any time on the steeper slopes in the mountains, with an angle of greater than 30 degrees, that you need to be avalanche aware with proper training and with knowledge of the avalanche forecast from the Colorado Avalanche Information Center. I'll put the link in the uh, 
show notes below. Also, during April, Trail Ridge Road and Old Fall River Road are both still closed, meaning that you're going to have to have a three-hour detour around the mountains to get from the east side to the west side of the park. Trail Ridge Road normally opens to traffic at the end of May. Lastly, I encourage you to enjoy hiking in the snow-free areas of the park, but be aware that if you hike in these areas, you should check yourself carefully for ticks after you finish your hike. The ticks are especially active from mid-March through early June. The CDC recommends that you throw all of your clothes in a dryer on high temperature for about 10 minutes after returning from a hike during tick season. Well, I hope you have an amazing visit to Rocky Mountain National Park. While you're here, stop by my gallery and say hello. We usually have some special sales happening during the month of April, and we'd love to see you. Thanks for watching. To help you prepare for your visit to Rocky Mountain National Park, visit my website, RockyMountainNationalPark.com. For hiking guides, calendars, coffee table books, and more, visit RockyTrailPress.com. And when you arrive, be sure and stop by my gallery in downtown Estes Park. It's called Images of RMNP.